All right, so welding sheet metal is probably one of the most difficult things there is to do, but welding sheet metal at least. Um, and the difficulty is that when you go to weld it, a lot of times you burn a hole, and it's it's just something you have to manage. It's not you're not going to stop doing that, um, especially when you have a gap. You're almost always going to have points in your area where you're going to have a gap like this okay a little bit of a gap and the good thing that's good about that is you're going to get penetration and a full weld all the way through where if it's too tight a lot of times if you don't have your heat hot enough then it won't weld all the way through and you'll see the seam on the other side so and then when you go to grind it off you've got a very very thin area so it's better to have a little bit of a gap like this all right and the challenge of that is you're going to have more places we're going to burn through. So if you look here at this weld, you know, it's kind of burning. It's kind of burning. When I get real wide, it's burning through. So I'm using this welder. And the reason I'm using this is because it's the easiest welder to learn how to weld with. Um, this is the Viver MiG 130. I'll put a link in the description. It has two knobs. Really, it has one. This is heat. And the heat, when you turn this up, the wire settings, the wire feed is automatic. It's called synergic settings. So all you do is you just turn this up and down. You make sure it's on the correct kind of wire. Um, it's on a negative ground. We are using gas. Uh, the most expensive part about this is you're going to have to buy a gas bottle and a regulator. You have to have a, uh, a regulator. We set that at Normally, your normal settings for a regulator is about 15 uh, rate of flow, 15 pounds of rate of flow. And I run mine at 10 because it uses a little less gas and I still get a good weld. So that's what I do. It saves me a little bit of gas. So you need a gas bottle and a regulator. The cheapest ones, the, the smallest one I would recommend would be a 55 and that's going to be really small. Okay. I would at least like an 80. Okay. An 80. This is a 125 or 150. I can't remember. I have one 125 and 150. I think this is the 125. So you can take it. You can take if you buy a smaller gas bottle, you can take it in. You can trade it up, and for like a hundred bucks, you can pay hundred and some odd dollars. You can pay for a bigger bottle because otherwise you're going to be going to the store a lot and buying gas. So the gas bottle is a must to be able to learn how to butt weld. You're not going to be able to do it with flex core. All right. So, all you got to do, remember the principle of welding, is you're melting this surface. So, you got two surfaces. You got one here, and you want one here. You have to melt this surface and melt that surface, and then fill the middle with wire. That's all you're doing. And the wire is kind of, kind of a filler, filler, filler for it, for the gap. All right? So, you notice this welder has, I said, one knob. This is your heat setting. It does everything. But then it has this thing here where it says minimum and maximum. And what this does, when you turn it down to minimum, it turns down the heat a little bit less and leaves the wire speed the same. So it's going to give their wire ratio is going to be a little bit higher. So you're going to have more wire per the heat setting and when you put it on minimum. When you put it on maximum, you're going to have less wire per the heat setting. So it depends on the person welding, it depends on what you're welding. But when you're welding a gap on this thing, I like to put it all the way to the minimum. When I'm when there's no gap, I'll put it just right to here at zero. So normally you're going to weld this with the machine at zero. But because we're welding up a gap, we're going to put it at minimum. I always leave my gas, gas bottle turned off whenever I'm not using it. The key to welding is settings. And this welder makes it easier for the beginner to weld with no without having... To know their settings because it has one knob one knob turns up the heat the wire speeds automatic it's pretty easy to use so this one here I, on this is a I put it at, at minimum the smallest amount of, of heat because we're trying not to burn through and we have a, this at the minimum so our wire to ratio is a little bit more wire for the heat setting it actually lowers the heat a little bit more by doing that all right so let's uh Everything's based, we do everything, small tack welds. If you do too much, 
All you have to do is just do a little tiny tack. As soon as that wire hits the surface, you let off the trigger pretty much. It's You can't let it be on there very long at all. If you're burning holes, you're letting the wire, you're, you're holding the trigger too long, okay? So the trick is, is just barely let it hit. It will actually be enough to get it to hold. And you try and want to get both surfaces. So sometimes when it's a real wide gap, I'll just do just this surface for a little while and I'll build this up and then I'll do the bottom surface and I'll put them together. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of get in there and I'll just kind of wiggle it to make sure I get both of them very quickly. I'll just kind of go like that. All right, I'm not going to have my gloves on or anything. I'm going to try and find the, put the wire in the gap and just pull the trigger. See, you heard it. As soon as you hear it make that noise, take a look at it. All right. I need my reading glasses on myself. I usually have my glasses on underneath my welding helmet. See how long I held that on there? That's it. So you look there and make sure it was melting this surface and melting the surface above it. And it did. It got right in the crack. So the next thing I'll do is, again, I'm just going to do the same thing over and over and over. And what I'll do is stack the welds next to each other. You don't want to weld on top of a weld, but you want to weld right next to that one. Uh, you know, and we're not going to talk about warpage right now. On a round warpage thing, warpage is not going to be much of an issue when it's round. But you should just do a few welds here, a few welds here, a few welds there. Okay. Technically, you should only just do one. But we're talking about, we've got like 10,000 welds to do. And I don't have the patience for that. To sit there and do one here, one there, one here, one, you know. Nobody's going to give you enough money to do that. Okay. So, if you want to do it that way, that's up to you. So I'm going to go right next to that weld and I'm going to angle my tip towards the other weld, but still in the same crack. So you can see my wire sticking out. I want, I want the gun very close because you need the gas to get in there. And I'm just going to go. Notice how I move the gun up and down. Very quickly. Okay, that's enough welds for that. That should grind down and be perfect. And what I'm trying to do is I'm using the angle towards the towards the other weld so that when I when I weld into that weld it's actually a little bit thicker than the than the uh, than the sheet metal so it's going to help me not burn through as much That's a little section I've done there. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you, you're going to run into places where there's a large gap. You can see there's a very large gap right here. So you're going to end up with that. When you weld a, when you make a hole, you're going to end up with a situation the same thing. You're going to do this the same way. So if you get a hole going, Dan, I got my reading glasses on so I can really see. My biggest problem is I can't see very good anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on just getting weld on this side. So I'm going to go shorter time period. Now I'm going to put a little bit of weld on this side. And notice how it then I made it go to both sides. All right. 
So I just do a few welds on one side, shorter, and then I'll just go to the other side. So it's just shorter time period. And once I get enough weld on there, then I'll give it a little bit longer hold. And it will still get... Plenty of penetration. Let's grind it off and we'll take a look at it. It's a little moundy looking, but that's okay. Grind this off and look at it. All right, so instantly we've ground that off. Give that a little check with the hammer and see if the crack is there. Uh, if you're, and you also see if you made any voids. You'll look for a little pinholes in it. And you just touch those up. You see that wider gap right there? That tells me I was getting it pretty hot. All right, let's see if I can get you guys up a little closer to look at that. That was getting a little bit hot, which is fine. That tells me I'm getting penetration. So uh, even this welder, when you have it turned down that low, it has enough heat that it will penetrate with that short of a stroke in, in most welders. If you hit it that short a period of time, it's not going to stick. This welder does. It, it, it actually works really good for butt welding, even though it uses .030 wire, and it only has a small spool, and it's plastic feed system. It actually works really well. So those wider gaps just take a little bit more finesse, a shorter time period, and it works perfectly. So... If you've never welded before, you could probably learn how to butt weld with this machine pretty quickly. Because again, welding is all about the settings and the machine does that for you. All you gotta do is go, if it's too cold, if you need more heat. So if you're welding thick metal, I'll do a little spot of that for it real quick. But uh, most guys are gonna be doing sheet metal, okay? so. But we're going to do a little bit thicker metals to show you how you can do that as well in this video. All right, so we've got a piece of eighth inch steel and a piece of three sixteenth steel. It's you know a lot of guys only show like that they're welding the like to like. You know, a three sixteenth is three sixteenths. Almost always you're going to have some variation of different sizes of steel. All right, you're not always going to have the same thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the 3 16th steel. I'm going to turn this up. The 3 16th is going to be what I need to penetrate into. So I'm going to turn it up all the way. That's at a 130 amp. All right. So let's do that. Again, we're going to put this back to zero. And that's where you normally will keep it, except when you're doing butt welding sheet metal. All right, so welding the thicker steel, we want our settings to be for the thicker piece, not the thinner one. We're going to melt the thick, thin one into the thick one. And we're gonna probably use a little less wire. I could turn down uh, the wire speed a little bit to do this um, by pushing it to the, what is it called? Maximum, we'll slow down the wire speed and turn up the heat. So I could do that and it would help a little bit, but I'm just gonna go with the zero and we're, it'll probably still make a weld that holds. Let's check it out. It's too much for my circuit breaker. I just blew the circuit breaker. We're going to continue on now. We, have, we got already got a weld there, so it's a little ugly. May not make such a pretty weld, but it'll still hold. Alright, you can see that's pretty well melted. 
Let's take a look at it. So this little cheap welder actually melted that pretty well. Yeah, it's not so pretty because obviously the circuit breaker blew like right in the middle. But that's a strong holding weld right there. You can see it melted pretty well. You're not going to melt all the way through a 3 16 with a welder like this. But that's deeply penetrated. It welded all the way through this one. You can see the edge of that's just gone. It melted it in. So like I said, I could turn down the wire speed a little bit and that would make it a little less moundy and a little more melty and it would be a little nicer looking. Maybe we can do another one here. Uh, let me reset this and I'll bring you back in. So when you melt, weld two different thicknesses of, or you're welding two pieces of thicker steel together, you want to be sure to go slower and around in circles or back and forth because you want to make sure that this piece welds to that piece. So you want to get this one hot and that one hot. So you kind of want to do this or like circles. I used to always use circles, but you can do it either way. Some guys do a U shape and just go nice and slow. The whole thing is on a thick steel you want to go slow, on a thin steel you want to go very short spurts, which are called stitches. This is dirty, so it's a little. That's why it sounds kind of weird. It's still welding it. Again, not the prettiest weld. I'm not going to be doing that much of this, but if you can see, that is melted. It's melted both surfaces of the metal. You can see the heat coming through on this side. You can actually see it burning all the way through, right at the very edge, right there. It's welding all the way through that piece of eighth inch. This little welder is actually capable of welding pretty thick steel. Again, it doesn't sound pretty, doesn't need to. It's just doing the job, and it doesn't sound like crispy like your other welders might. But this, again, this is just, you know this is a inexpensive welder that does the job pretty well. So it's a good starting point. And, and to me, it's you know yeah, it's cheap. When I was moving this thing around, the ground came out of here, so I had to recrimp it. So, you know, it's not in a really expensive machine, but it's a great learning machine and it, you could probably use it for years before you would ever had issues you know that you're going to want to replace it you'll probably like it so much that you'll be like hey you know what I think I'll just keep that one let's weld this area up same thing not even clean I'm out of wire I just heard the machine run out of wire so Anyway, that's it for this portion. It's capable of welding pretty thick. Look at how much it got into that 316. So you can see the melt on there, how much it melted in. So yeah, it's getting great penetration. And again, welding thick steel is pretty easy. You just go slower. Um, and you're not gonna be worried about burning holes. You're just worried about getting it hot enough by going slower, you're getting more heat on it, and that heat's going to help it penetrate better, and that's going to help your weld last or hold better. So anyway, I'll go get some wire in this thing, and we'll continue on with the rest of the other video uh, showing everybody this whole butt welding series.